In this video, I'll explain how this sensor works, how to read the signal, read the holes, and find a fun way to use it as speed or RPM sensor. Welcome back to Milium with only one L YouTube channel. Before we start, we should understand how this sensor works. This sensor uses an infrared LED on one side and there is a photo sensor on another side. So when there is no obstacle between these sides, the infrared light reaches the photo sensor and gives the signal to the circuit. And this module will output 5V or high state. But the opposite, if there is an obstacle between these sides, the photosensor will not detect light and no signal given to the circuit, so the output of this module will be low. So the conclusion is, if there is obstacle, it will output high, and if there isn't, it will output low. With this conclusion, we can easily read the signal with an Arduino. We will try to read every time the signal from the sensor is falling or changing from high to low, or from there is an obstacle to no obstacle. This is the wiring diagram if you want to read the sensor and print it to an LCD. So I will use interrupt at pin 2 of Arduino, and every time interrupt happened, it will call function named count and interrupt will happen every falling. And I make the LCD print the holes every half second or 500 milliseconds. The count function that caught every interrupt just increment the value of holes. Let's try this program. So I try to put a paper between the infrared and photo sensor. As you can see, every time I take the paper from the sensor, it will add holes by 1. That works perfectly. So how do we measure speed with this sensor? We will use this ability to detect obstacle to measure the speed. We will need something like a disk and give it some holes. You can buy this like this, but for example, in this video, I make my own disk with 3D printer. I make a disk with 12 holes. More holes mean more accuracy. I put the disk on the mother shaft, turn it on and let the Arduino count the holes. If you make yourself with a 3D printer like me, make sure you paint the disk. Because sometimes, if the disk is too thin, the infrared still can penetrate through the disk. Ok, the next question is, how do you determine if the disk has already turned one time. Every one turn, the sensor will detect 12 holes, right? To count how much turn or rotation, we can just divide the number of holes by 12. Here's the implementation on the code. Dividing holes by 12 and then also print the turns value to the LCD. Don't worry, you can always copy the code from the link in the description below. Now, as we can see, the turns or rotation value is incrementing. Then, as we know, RPM is how many turns in one minute. So we can just count the number of turns for one minute long. 
then reset the whole scalder after one minute and just repeat again and again but it will take so long time we have to wait for one minute to get rpm so to count faster we can use the sampling method for example if I want to count only for 6 seconds, it needs to multiply by 10. Because 1 minute has 60 seconds, and if the speed you want to measure is high enough, you can count only for 1 second. This 1 second time you can consider by yourself depend on how fast is the system you wanted to measure. A faster system will be enough with shorter sampling. The slower system will need more time to sample to get accurate data. Ok, I wanted to try to measure the RPM reel for 1 minute. So I have to set the millis every 80,000 millisecond. And no need to multiply this value. And reset the holes by setting the value to 0. So it will be recounting after 1 minute or 60,000 milliseconds. So never forget to reset the number of holes. So this cycle will occur every 1 minute. Every cycle, this function will calculate the RPM and reset the number of holes over and over again. And also don't forget to print the RPM value. One eternity later. This is the result. The RPM counted about 1200. But this is very not useful since we have to wait for one minute to get the RPM. Now let's have an experiment with the sampling method. I'll count the holes only for one second. So I set the cycle only for 1000 milliseconds. Then we need to multiply the value by 60. With one second cycle, the result is about the same. RPM is read about 1200. And the refresh time is way faster. So that's it. This is the end of this video. If you find this video is useful, don't forget to share and subscribe, because more videos are coming. Thank you.